this morning. Yeah. We're changing that for permanent transmission. We can just hand it over to them real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Do we need to, yeah. What do we need to do? Just state that, I guess? Or? I guess. Which Mr. Bowman has asked for people to point out. It's in the yeah. Couldn't find anything. Can I make a motion that we put duties and term on it? You could do that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is, will you come back with that? Or? I can do that, yeah. Okay. Between Jeff and I, we could do that, yeah. Okay. Okay, I call to order the regular scheduled meeting of the Rock Mountain City Council on December 12th, approximately 7 o'clock. This time, I would like to um, ask everybody to please stand and observe a moment of prayer. And, and during this time, if you would consider and honor a moment of silence for Natanya Richardson and her family who recently passed away. I'd like to ask City Clerk, please call the roll. Here. Blackwell. Here. Joyner. Here. TJ Walker. Here. Daltrich. Here. Harris. Here. Here. Walker. Here. Okay. We have a quorum. Okay. okay. This time I'd like to consider the uh, minutes of the regular schedule. Well, before we go to there, um, I would like to make any. Well, no, we'll do that later. Uh, consideration of the minutes of the regular scheduled mini city council that was held on September 26, 2022. Looking for a motion to approve the minutes. Motion made by Councilman Joyner. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman T.J. Walker. Is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. At this time, I'd like to see if there are any uh, additions or deletions to the agenda. I've been requested that we remove item I. From the consent agenda to the regular agenda, we'll do that after the consent agenda. Are there any other additions or deletions? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Councilman Daltridge. I would like to add to our agenda um, the vote for the city council to appointing our next, uh, hopefully our next city uh, manager, Keith C. Rogers, Jr. Okay. Add uh, the, the confirmation vote for Keith Rogers. Any other additions and or deletions to the agenda? Hearing none, uh, again, to remove item I from the consent agenda, move it to the uh, regular agenda, and then to um, you know, a vote to confirm Keith Rogers as next city manager. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Councilman Joyner. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Tom Harris. Uh, any need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Uh, the agenda has been adjusted accordingly. 
At this time, I'll ask uh, our interim city manager, Peter F. Barney, to uh, please give us a community update. Just, just three things. Uh, one is that the city had entered into an agreement with um, NCDOT and the rail, CSX uh, Railroad, some years ago, had to do with cro closing some rail crossings. Uh, there's one crossing that is soon to be closed. I think the work begins on it on December the 19th, and that is the crossing at, at Pitt Street. There's signs out there on both approaches to that crossing, uh, but that crossing is scheduled to be closed. I don't know that everybody knows about that. Uh, we had a major water line break on Sunset Avenue right near Patterson Drive, uh, right near Combs Century 21 Real Estate Agency. Uh, it was a major water line break. Uh, that water line was under high pressure. And it's all been restored now. The, the street has been repaired. The cut has been repaired. But if you want to see what the force of that water did, look at the uh, curb uh, ramp at the entrance to uh, Combs Century 21 driveway. That concrete section has been raised about six inches, and so all of that will have to be replaced sometime in the next couple of weeks. And the, other, the only other thing is that just a reminder that, um, uh, that there will be no city council meeting on December 26th. So this should be our last city council meeting meeting in the year 2022. Great. Thank you, uh, Mr. Varney. Are there any questions or um, observations or comments for Mr. Varney? Okay. Seeing none at this time, I would like to make a presentation um, on the occasion of her 100th birthday. I'd like to ask Ms. Ruth Anderson Smith to please come forward.
If it's uh, so many uh, students here in Nash Rocky Mount, librarian, and she taught at Parker School for numerous of years, and she also been a very strong supporter, an officer in the NAACP, and she's a member of one of the greatest sororities. They are representing their pink and green, but we love her, and she has made a, a tremendous contribution in this city and all over this country and we just appreciate her birthday today thank you for thank you all for coming thank you councilman knight at this time i'd like to uh, ask the board to consider uh, the following resolution uh, whereas claire knight served the citizens of rocky mount as a member of the rocky mount board of adjustment from january 2006 until november of 2011 and whereas Claire Knight continued to serve as Citizens of Rocky Mount as a member of the Rocky Mount Planning Board from November 2011 until July of 22. And whereas the Rocky Mount City Council appointed Claire Knight three times as a member of the Rocky Mount Board of Adjustment and five times as a member of the Rocky Mount Planning Board, thereby showing the confidence they placed in her to help decide appeals related to the enforcement of the city's land development code and to conduct a comprehensive and continuing program to direct uh, the community's growth and establish principles and policies for guiding development in the city of Rocky Mount. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and city council on the city of, of the city of Rocky Mount, on behalf of the citizens of Rocky Mount, hereby express their appreciation of Clara Knight for her 17 years of dedicated service as a member of the city of Rocky Mount boards, commissions, and committees. Do I have a motion to approve this um, resolution? Motion made by Councilman Knight, seconded by Councilman George, um, Joyner. Is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Okay, resolution passes. I'd like to ask Mr. Ernest Taylor if he'll come forward and accept this on behalf of Ms. Knight. He's one of the one of the best dressed men in Rocky Mount. <laughs> Taylor Shoe World, <laughs> Ernest Strikeout Taylor. And I think Miss Knight was unable to be here tonight because of her health. So please keep her in your prayers. Okay, this time I'd like to ask the Rocky Mount City Council to consider the following resolution. Whereas John Mevin has served the citizens of Rocky Mount as a member of the Rocky Mount Historic Preservation Commission since the inception of the board in 1997, and whereas John Mevin served many roles during his time on the commission, including vice chairperson, chairperson, and chairing the Rules of Procedure Subcommittee, and whereas the Rocky Mount City Council appointed John Mevin six times to four-year terms as a member of the Rocky Mount Historic Preservation Commission, thereby showing the confidence they placed in him to help safeguard the heritage of the city of Rocky Mount by preserving and regulating historic landmarks and district. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and city council of the city of Rocky Mount, on behalf of the citizens of Rocky Mount, hereby express their appreciation of John Mevin for his 25 years of dedicated service as a member of the Rocky Mount Historic Preservation Commission. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Motion made by Councilman Daughtridge, seconded by Councilman Joyner. Is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Resolution has passed. Mr. Mevin, if you'd please come forward.
10,000 steps in today. Okay, let's see. That brings us to item number eight, which are petitions to be received from the public. The public petitions portion of the City Council meeting is an opportunity for public comment, and the City Council appreciates your attendance and thanks you for expressing your views and opinions. The City Council values all citizen input. This is an opportunity to raise a question or present a request to the council. However, in most cases, council members will not respond to public comments, but may refer a matter to the city manager or staff for follow-up. Time will be monitored in order to give everyone an opportunity to speak, and speakers will have three minutes. Please be aware that sign-in sheets must be presented to the security officer prior to the opening of the city council meeting. And if an organized group is present to speak on a common issue, please designate one person to present the group's comments. If your comments are in regard to an item that is the subject of a public hearing, please wait until that item is introduced to speak. Time will also be monitored. If your comments are in regard to an evidentiary hearing, additional time may be granted. City Council requests you please adhere to the following guidelines. Complete a sign-in sheet, address comments to the Council as a whole and not to individual Council members or City staff. Speak from the podium in a civil, non-argumentative and respectful manner. Personal attacks which have the potential to disrupt the meeting will not be tolerated, and you will be asked to sit down or remove from the meeting. And please keep comments to three minutes. This time, I would like to ask the GKW Foundation for Kids um, to please come forward. Hello. My name is Gertrude. You call me TG in the community. I'm the owner of GKW Foundation for Kids and Teens, a nonprofit in Rocky Mount. We are trying to get a GKW home for kids. Yes, I know y'all have some location for kids, but I visit them, and a lot of them isn't genuinely. We do kid events. We've been doing it for five years. Um, parents work, so kids can't get to the events, so we bring the events to the kids in different neighborhoods, um, a lot of low income, like the projects and places like that, where I grew up, of course. We have an event this Sunday at South Rocky Mountain Gym. It's an all pro dad basketball game, but we're gonna have Santa there, free pictures for the kids, a candy drop, and gift giveaways. We do this every year. Um, our goal is to get a GKW home with a, a library in it, um, a room for the kids to sleep. Um, and also how we're gonna fund it, we're trying to build a kid restaurant. Cause really we only have Golden Corral for the kids. Um, a kid restaurant would be like a family oriented restaurant for the kids. And that's how we're planning to fund the GKW home. And that's what I would like to present to you all. Thank you very much. You're I'd like to invite uh, Ms. Nathalyn O'Ree to the podium. Good evening, Mayor, City Manager, and City Council members and those present. My name is Nathalyn O'Ree. And I stand before you as a citizen of Rocky Mount who is concerned about support for United Christian Ministries. I've heard rumors of it having a possibility of closing, and I see it's on the agenda tonight for a $30,000 contribution from the city. But I'm also concerned about the um, information being circulated about us getting a new judicial center for the amount of $20 million. And as a citizen, I need more transparency regarding the funding and the building and different things regarding the Judicial Center. And I'm also requesting more support for United Christian Ministries. Um, if people have nowhere to go in times of need, um, that will um, cause more crime, and of course, you'll need a judicial center to send them to prison. Um, 
I went to early vote during the regular season of voting, and a young lady was at social services sitting on the floor because she had been locked out of her home by our friend Farouk. She was holding a baby and had two more children, and two more children were away in school. Where was she supposed to go stay? We need resources for times like this. Uh, we're just coming out of COVID, and a lot of people have not recovered. So please keep in mind our needed, the needs of our citizens. And the Bible says you, the poor you shall have with you always. And if we help the poor, they don't have to remain poor. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Malcolm Logan to the podium. Uh, Sis here, you came to vote. Um, talk about the public hearing, so if you'll just wait. I'd um, like to ask Mr. Al Bullard to the podium. Merry Christmas, Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council. My name is Al Bullard. I live at uh, 3503 Chelsea Drive here in Rocky Mount. I want to tell you how nice I was riding up here, how nice the city lake looks. It's absolutely beautiful. And y'all have done a tremendous job. I'm coming here because one job I don't think was done right. The language was terrible. And it was the parade. There was a car in that parade that had some of the most terrible, foul language coming out of, out of the car. And I understand the, like line 22, it says you play all Christmas music. And this wasn't Christmas music. And I have it recorded. If you would like to hear it, I'll be glad to make y'all a copy. I'm sure you have probably seen it. And uh, so I think we need to, to uh, back in the day, uh, Al Sweat did a tremendous job with his parade. He had, he had the uh, uh, Merchants Association did the parade and they got folks and they had it on Saturday to bring folks downtown to shop and as a kid I worked at Epstein's and I, I, that was the big thing on Saturday right before, after Thanksgiving. So uh, I, I, I'm coming to you that we needed to, to, I was ashamed, I'm ashamed of the parade we had. And I've been to several parades around just because I'm retired, don't have anything to do. Went, went to Cary, went to Wilson, I mean, different places. And they absolutely do a tremendous job. But I appreciate the job y'all do. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you, Mr. Bullard. I'd like to ask uh, Reverend Nehemiah Smith to the podium. Uh, good evening, Council, Mayor. Um, I would again like to thank uh, the city of Rocky Mount for uh, your support of Feed the City, the third annual Feed the City. It was a great success at current count. We have about, uh, we believe about 3,300 people that were served uh, this weekend. Um, I want everybody to know that uh, uh, Councilman Deltrich um, and uh, Harris and Mayor, after you all left, that's when we got the wave. Uh, y'all, <laughs> y'all worked during time when nobody came, uh, but as soon as you left, uh, all of a sudden the wave came. Uh, I want to thank also all of the councilmen. I want to thank Councilman Jabaris Walker and Councilman uh, um, Councilman Joyner for uh, their support as well, and all of you all support. Um, this year, our community partner Sarah Lee, Walmart, Dunkin' Donuts, of course, the City of Rocky Mount, Tri Faith Ministries, Food Line, uh, Piggly Wiggly, Bread Box, Chick Fil A. Uh, and Hing Ta. Uh, also, we want to make sure that we thank um, and let you know that you have two great chiefs in this city, the chief of police and the fire chief, uh, because their men were out there and they served people and they got the opportunity for the community to see that, that you know, people are working with them. Uh, and Chief Hassel even came out and passed out some stuff. So <laughs> I was glad to see Chief out there uh, passing out toys to the kids and, and people getting a chance to really know uh, who our city leaders are. Um, 
too often, uh, the reason why things go bad is because people quit. Uh, I don't know about anybody else, but like my namesake in the Bible, I refuse to come down off of this wall of helping people. Uh, because the minute I come down, that's when everything will fall apart. And I'm glad that you are on the wall with me. Um, my good friend from Argentina um, was trying to teach me Spanish, and he taught me this thing. He said, uh, debemos amarnos unos a otros porque Dios es amor. It says we ought to love one another because God is love. And this weekend, I'm so glad that, that we were able to show our community that God is love and that love is an action. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Reverend Smith. I'd like to invite Stephanie Houghton to the uh, podium. My name is Stephanie Houghton, and I write the blog Main Street Rocky Mount. And I wanted to come tonight to be with all of you on this last um, go round of the of the year. It's been a fabulous year. Um, I know we always have things that happen, but um, you can't ask for any more positive things than what's happening right now on Main Street. Um, the new opening of the uh, office um, is, Milan has done, it will say more for what can be done for the with the architecture downtown than words can say about the, the, the uh, possibilities. And um, I wanted to, you know, to, to share with everybody that we, um, we have lots to be blessed about. And the other thing I wanted to come is, it turns out, a after um, Lige added something, um, our time is running out with Mr. Varney. And I wanted to come and be sure to say, uh, and I know I speak for all of you, that his name will forever be linked now with, with Rocky Mount. I think this is the fourth time that he's trying to retire. And I have a feeling he's going to make it this time. Um, <laughs> I, I wanted to tell you a story. He, he took me to the train station for the first time when I first saw it. And um, everybody was, he spoke to everybody and everybody spoke to him and he called it, that people called him Mr. Peter, Mr. Peter. And there was a black lady there in the train station and I said to her, um, t -t -tell, tell me about Mr. Varney, I is he a good person? And this woman with some sparkle in her eyes said, oh, he's the best. And I think all of us would agree to that, that um, we probably won't even know all of the things that he has taken his hand to. But I know all of you on the city council have turned to him. I've never been here when there's been a question asked that he didn't know the answer and then some. And. Um, I don't know how we'll do without him, but we will somehow. Yeah. And all of you will step up and um, help whoever this new person is. Um, I hope that he is a, a man who, who has a moral compass like Mr. Varney, um, who has no guile, and who is always uh, on top of what might be best for the citizens and what might be best um, for the community. And um, as I say, I don't know how we'll exactly do without him, but he'll be here and he'll, he's always available. You know that, he'll come and speak, he'll take you on a tour, he'll do whatever. So thank um, you. Thank we, you, Ms. we thank all you. say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to invite uh, Colonel Estancy to the podium. I'm sorry. For the public hearing? Okay, got it. All right, fair enough. And uh, this time I'd like to invite Bronson Williams to the podium. I want to say good evening uh, to everyone. And I um, had an opportunity to watch the uh, committee as a whole meeting today. Uh, so great things that the city is doing as it relates to the committee uh, as a whole and working towards uh, making Rocky Mount a better place. This past week, I had an opportunity to go over to Baskerville Elementary School 
uh, where there again I saw our chief of police and many uh, people, uh, well, many officers with the department helping young men tie ties. That was one of the most unique experiences, sharing uh, values, wisdom with them, and creating a, a hopefully a lifelong mentor. We need more positive programming like that in our community and always excited uh, to see just how our police department is engaging with our public. That is important. Uh, bridging those relationships uh, that were so often looked at in a negative light because of what, what happens nationally uh, with our police department. But I must say that we are doing a great job here in Rocky Mount under Chief uh, Hassel and the many other folks that's within the agency uh, for sure. And we thank the City of Council for making the necessary investment in, in the agency. Uh, with fuchsia systems and et cetera. We're seeing people uh, being caught who are committing crimes, and so that is good too. So we can say uh, the Rocky Mount is a place uh, that has no time for crime, uh, indeed. And the other piece, as, as I always say, is I hope that in the upcoming months, uh, as it was made mention in the committee as a whole meeting, that we'll real, really take a hard look at uh, what a plan is going forward. Um, I know that we say, hey, we, we can look at the history of Rocky Mountain and see it moving forward and, and all this good stuff. But, but I want people who are not from the city to be able to go to our website or go here and say, hey, I want to invest in the Rocky Mountain as well. I actually think that that will help with some of the incentives that you're offering because uh, if they see what's going on, they may say, I, I need less of an incentive because I see the magic happening in our city. I see the, the full potential of Rocky Mountain because I took the time. Uh, to put together a comprehensive plan where people can buy into. We need more buy-in in the Rocky Mountain. I believe we got it. We're on the right trajectory, and I hope you continue to do uh, what you do. And Merry Christmas to all. Thank you, sir. Okay, at this point, that brings us to item number nine on our agenda, which is the consent agenda. Please recall that we removed item I from the consent agenda. I'd like a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda as published. So moved. Motion made by Councilman Joyner. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman T.J. Walker. Is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Consent agenda passes. That brings us to item 9A, which is uh, consideration of a lease procurement and maintenance management with enterprise of uh, fleet management, adopting a resolution approving the administrative policy number Roman numeral 3.22 entitled Lease Vehicle Procurement Policy and adopting resolution amending position and classification and pay plan as written in the agenda. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Motion made by Councilman T.J. Walker. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Tom Harris. Uh, is there a need for discussion? Yes, sir. I have a comment. Counc and Councilman thank Blackwell. You, thank you for moving it out of the consent agenda. I think a $2 million transaction that um, changes the way that we uh, staff our car or purchase or lease cars deserves some time and attention. We have had one presentation, um, several questions that came up about that. And um, the thing that is most concerning to me, uh, I'm trying to understand, other than having a third party manage our business, um, I'm really concerned about the long-term implications of moving a public uh, function into private sector, looking for um, how sourcing is going to be improved when you're purchasing off of the state plan anyway. And um, who is making new cars? Um, the manufacturers are making new cars. Um, it's going to be lucrative for the company. Um, and perhaps, and I, I saw the first pass at the data that was presented, but again, it's just interesting to me uh, for transparency, for accountability, that uh, we've had one meeting in the Committee of the Whole and we're changing drastically a uh, move to purchase city vehicles. I'm concerned about it. Um, I'm not saying that it's wrong or illegal. I'm just concerned about it. And I just felt, and I've, I can't vote, I mean, I hope it works. And I'm sure we have the uh, votes to pass it. Um, but I think it sets a precedent that is not reflective, thoughtful, um, and I don't feel it's properly vetted, but I hope it works. But I will be voting against it. Thank you, Councilman Blackwell. Is there further discussion? Y yes. Yeah, Councilman um, Knight? I thought we had some, uh, council members had some concerns in reference to um, this contract, uh, and I don't think we really got a 
full, clear understanding of the questions that we had. And uh, I'm not comfortable in, in voting for it uh, at this particular time. I know that um, this company was at one of the um, conferences that we had, and I did read up on some of the information. But we were also uh, researching to find out if any other municipality uh, was doing the same thing with this company. And the last meeting that we had, it was, I think they were only doing something with the county and not any uh, municipalities in, in North Carolina. So it is a concern. Um, it, it may seem if we are going to save some money, but I still have some concerns about it. Thank you. Additional comments? Councilman Joyner. Could we have the city manager to share with us how are we going to monitor this and what ways, if it's not working, that we can uh, do something different? Mr. Barney? Let's see. For, for some background, uh, for years and years and years, the city has um, acquired um, vehicles off state contract is how we've done it. And the vehicles we're talking about under, under this proposal are, are our light duty vehicles, these would be sedans and pickup trucks and vans, uh, that type of vehicle. Uh, we have 342 um, light duty vehicles in the fleet and uh, more than half of those are over 10 years old. What that indicates is that we have really not been replacing those vehicles uh, on the schedules that, that we really should be doing. And so. Uh, so what this idea is is to is to enter into an agreement to to lease vehicles um, for the amount of money that we would use to buy um, some number of vehicles say in, in this year's budget uh, we could we could lease uh, you know a, a greater number of those vehicles and so that we can get our fleet caught back up that's really what this proposal is trying to do is catch up uh, the, um, the, the, the the vehicles in the fleet to get those more uh, uh, more up to date and more safe and, and, and more fuel efficient all, all of that um, I guess the, uh, the the control mechanism that um, well let's see the agreements call for a, a lease agreement and also for um, for maintenance management. So what we would do would be to, to farm out uh, through this arrangement the, the maintenance, the regular vehicle maintenance for these vehicles. The, um, uh, I guess the concern, not, I don't want to say the concern, but the, uh, the control that I would want to be sure that we um, implement on this is um, when we replace a vehicle, so when we come up with a list of vehicles, these vehicles uh, we want to take out of the fleet and, um, and lease these replacement vehicles, whatever they are, some number of replacement vehicles, that we would determine, that, that management really would determine what those vehicles would be. In other words, uh, it's easy for maybe people within the, the employees within the divisions and in the departments to say, well, I want to upgrade from a uh, from a Frontier to a F-150, <laughs> or or I want to upgrade from a, a Frontier type pickup truck to a Sequoia or something like that. Uh, there the, the needs to be, and and I think there there would be control over that. Um, by having a city manager, the assistant city managers, and the finance director uh, approving every single one of those requests. That, that's, the, that's the one thing that I see as a control mechanism for, um, for managing the, the replacement of these vehicles. Uh, as it is proposed, it would save money because we would be disposing of vehicles um, when they reach their economic uh, end, end of their economic life. And, uh, and then using the equity from those sales to um, to invest in the in the new in a new lease for new vehicles um, it is something very different from what this city has ever done before um, it has it is done by other municipalities uh, mostly smaller municipalities but also with uh, in, in the state of North Carolina but also with counties uh, in the state uh, whose fleet size is uh, is generally equivalent to our fleet size so it, it has has been done um, in, in, in other jurisdictions in North Carolina. Um, 
So I, I think it is a, a manageable thing to do, and, and what is it, again, intended to do is to um, to bring our fleet, get, to catch up the, the, the fleet from what we should have been doing is replacing those vehicles as they age out. Thank you, Mr. Varney. Is there any for further discussion? Yes, Councilman Joyner. If this don't work, what is our way out? Terminate the contract is the way out. Uh, we can terminate at any time. Um, the way I'm envisioning it is that it would take about a, a five-year period to to to, to uh, completely replace the light-duty fleet, but it could be that uh, after year one, say, uh, we do not like this, this is not working, we're not happy, I don't know, whatever reason we have, we don't want to do this anymore, we, can, we can, uh, can stop the contract. And what would happen then is the vehicles that we lease, that are we are then leasing, we would need to be, uh, we, would, we would acquire those vehicles. So, but you can stop it at any time. One quick. Councilman Knight. Um, have we opened this up to other car or rental or leasing companies other than Enterprise? No, we haven't. Uh, the arrangement with Enterprise, I think, has been entered into with other jurisdictions, other cities and counties, and and what we what we're doing, I think, is piggybacking on uh, on those um, on the, on on those processes that those jurisdictions have followed in order to get to enterprise. And we are currently piggybacking as of now, correct? I'm so, Say that again now. I mean, aren't we doing the same in the process that we are? Well, yes, we, uh, well, I mean, in terms of replacing vehicles, what we've been doing is buying vehicles off state, state contract. Correct. And so we, we're to use the term piggybacking on the state, basically. They do the, all the bidding for all, all kinds of vehicles, and we just, we just um, use their vendors and their, their bid process to acquire vehicles. And that goes for both uh, light duty and uh, heavy duty pieces of equipment. Thank you, Mr. Varney. Any further questions for Mr. Varney or other comments? No, I just, I just want to make just one comment. We talked more about $10,000 grants that we have, a $2 million program. And I applaud the staff and their creativity. And thank you for your research. Um, my concern, however, is that um, it's unvetted and it shifts to another type of business model that we've not engaged in before. And I would have just liked to have had more conversation and discussion and more engagement from our team about um, this big shift that we're making in policy development. And I do want to say that um, I hope this does not bleed over into other departments and philosophies about privatizing public business. I'm also concerned about maintenance schedules. We've got a maintenance team and a crew and employing third party folks to manage processes with public dollars that we should be able to do ourselves. That's just my opinion. Um, Mr. Barney's done a phenomenal job, and I think he's playing, we're playing, we're playing catch up for time past. And um, if we do this, I recommend that we limit it um, or research it and create lots of transparency, it's always been called, transparency about the actual performance of the contract versus what was stated on the front end. I'm still voting against it, but I know you got the votes to pass it, but so what? It's okay. I'm Thank you. Right. Thank you, Mr. Black. Well, I'm going to call the question now. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Aye. Okay, the eyes, uh, the, it passes. Let's <laughs> say that way. Right. <laughs> the first eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. That's another way to say that, right? Um, Mr. Rose, is it possible for us to combine uh, item 10 and item 11? Uh, in, in the public hearing? No, I think they're, they're separate. They need to be separate. Yeah. All right, very well. Uh, that being the case, uh, we will. I will open up the public hearing on item number 10, which is uh, explanation of the feasibility study relative to the annexation number 328-9121 for West Mountain Drive. I'd like to have staff come forward and um, provide that information to us. And at that time, I will. we will acknowledge that uh, receipt of the feasibility study and open it up to the public.
Good evening, Mayor, members of Council. Um, <clears throat> first item, 921 West Mound Drive. It's approximately 7.11 uh, acres. Uh, the request came in. Water is available on this site. Uh, sewer is not available currently. Um, according to the annexation agreement, um, environmental services will not be provided uh, for the utility service agreement. There will be a proposed uh, surplus based on estimated uh, tax revenue, um, and it is looking like this would be potentially Ward 4 if approved. Any questions for Mr. Deaton? Okay, seeing none, hearing none, what I'll do is I'll ask Mr. Logan if he'd like to come to the podium. And any member of the public who's here to speak on this matter, if you'll just simply line up, uh, that would be helpful. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor, uh, City Council persons, uh, Mr. Peter, uh, <laughs> City Clerk. Um, first, let me just open by thanking you for your uh, leadership. I do not take lightly the responsibility that comes with public service, the often thankless job, the uh, emotion and the time and energy that comes along with that is something that um, we all need to stand and applaud. My name is Malcolm Logan. I'm a nine-year resident and small business owner within uh, Nash County and within the city of Rocky Mount. Um, I'm rising in support of uh, agenda item number 10, the proposed annexation number 328 concerning the property at 9121 West Mount Drive. Over the past few days, you would have received a communication from the petitioner, James Galliard, articulating an appeal for this matter. By way of restatement, this non-contiguous property is currently serviced by City of Rocky Mount Water, Electric, and Natural Gas. The petitioner seeks voluntary annexation to allow for the privately funded installation of Rocky Mount sewer. Uh, concurrent to annexation, the parcel would be redesignated from R30 to OI2. Uh, pursuant to the findings and recommendations of the Department of Development Services Feasibility Study, I respectfully request your approval of the annexation petition. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public wishing to speak on item number 10? Please come forward. If you would, state your name for the record and your address would be also helpful. Yes, my name is John Cheatham. I live at 3551 Wood Duck Lane and that adjoins the property in question. Okay, thank you. I've been there about 18 years. I believe I res represent the West Mount community when I say that I am opposed to the satellite annexation of 9121, 9041, and 9053 West Mount Drive. West Mount has obvious ties to Rocky Mount in many ways. Many of us work, shop, and have family and or friends that are city neighbors. We want to see Rocky Mount prosper. It's in our best interest. We understand an individual loan owner's, landowner's right to request voluntary annexation, and we respect that, into the city. And we also understand that this does not create a future avenue for involuntary annexation of surrounding property. We are deeply concerned as a community, however, that the change in character that will result the petition for annexation is just the beginning for this property. The applicant has clearly stated intentions of changing the character of the property to commercial or business use, which is inconsistent with the current surrounding residential and agricultural uses. This will require rezoning after annexation. Such rezoning is inconsistent with the previous or current Nash County comprehensive land use plan. West Mount has retained its rural residential character despite having four lanes from Bethlehem Road to Halifax Road for approximately the last 40 years. Business and commercial areas remain centered at crossroads rather than along the residential stretches of West Mount Drive. When Word Tabernacle purchased the property, the community understood that they would ultimately use the property for a church. They have since moved into the Home Depot facility. How they have indicate, now they have indicated possible plans for restaurants, private campgrounds, and RV park outdoor amphitheater, and event and conference venues. These uses will require rezoning to classifications, excuse me, that would include a host of other uses that are drastically different in nature than the current res rural residential character. They would also create different and more intensive traffic flow than residential or conventional church use. We request that each of these issues be thoughtfully considered before approving the pending satellite annexation request of 9121 9041 and 9053 West Mount Drive. 
thank you for your time. I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Anybody else from the public wishing to speak, please come forward. So Mayor, City Council, uh, my name is Keith Langley. I live at 3409 Cutchin Drive, directly across from the property that we were discussing. I oppose the annexation requested of 9121, 9041, and 9053 West Drive. As you review feasibility studies related to the satellite annexation under General Statute 160A-31, I ask that you consider the following. Number one, the property is located almost a mile from the current contiguous city limits. Number two, the property is only a mile away from Westmount Fire Department or Fire and Rescue Services, but three miles from the closest city fire station on Winstead Avenue. Three, First responders are able to provide a faster response time to this area from the local fire department rather than the city, better serving the property health and safety. If converting to business zoning after annexation, street maintenance services will be impacted. Number five, if environmental services are needed in the future, they would likely experience greater costs and revenue benefits for traveling outside the contiguous city limits to service a small number of business and residential points. Number six, most of the property is tax exempt and as such is not contributing to ongoing services that would be provided to the city, to the, that would be provided to service the area. Number seven, the, the applicant has stated publicly the need for sewer service. The closest sewer service is approximately one mile away. Even if applicant is able to obtain grants for their needs, it is likely that the city would examine and pursue an oversized sewer plan at the city's expense to accommodate uh, proposed future growth. This would likely result in expense to the city in excess of 1.2 million. Number eight, sewer service will be required significantly, significant capital improvements and acquisitions of easements from the community owners that would likely be hostile to such acquisition and the great cost to the city. Nine, most of the land between current city limits and the proposed site have multi-generational ownership with younger generational owners continuing to live on family property. This reduces the likelihood of future development and annexation that would otherwise provide long-term benefit from capital, from Thank city you. capital. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other member for the public wishing to speak, please come forward. Good afternoon, my name is Gwendolyn Rigsby. I live at 1623 West Mount Drive between the current city limits and the proposed annexation property. I am a lifelong resident of the West Mount community. I also oppose the annexation request of 9121, 9041, and 9053 West Mount Drive. In your consideration, I ask that you review the sufficiency of notice hearing. It is my understanding that property owners within 250 feet of the su subject property were supposed to be notified. I do not have this list, but in reviewing the feasibility study, I see a list of adjoining owners. I believe this would include Grace Drupal at 9243 West Mount Drive, Cody and Ashley Cobb Melvin at 9257 West Mount Drive, as well as those owners on the other side of the Tar River, including Shirley Curtis at 3506 Shenandoah Drive and Bobby Joyner at 12010 East NC 97. Additionally, when looking at annexation of additional property into any town or city, there are many things that need to be looked at and considered. One of the most important ones should be return on investment. This test is done with every business decision. Elected officials have a very clear charge to look after the purse strings of the public funds as well. This proposed annexation is surely a case that will lead to one or two things. 
higher taxes on the remaining populace of the city, or possible reduced services to the balance of the city. Look at this as if you were buying a house. You would always be sure there's sufficient revenue stream to make the mortgage payment. That logic applies when considering whether to approve a requested annexation. Is there sufficient revenue stream to pay the cost to provide the services that match what the other parts of the city have available? The case here is clearly no. Annexation is very similar to rezoning. The action taken applies to the land, not the person making the request. Even if the applicant knows the property does not currently have key services like sewer or solid waste pickup, does not make those service obligations go away. The cost of all services provided to taxpayers must be factored in determining cost. Within the planned activity stated by the applicant, there will certainly be added costs for police protection and emergency services, as well as many others. I thank you for your consideration in opposing this annexation request. Thank you. Anybody else here from the public wishing to speak? Gentlemen and council, thank you for the opportunity to speak before you tonight. My name is Jack Tyson. I live at uh, 2306 Bunny Drive in Elm City. I own a property at 9214 Westmount Drive that is adjacent to my mother's property at 9186. Both of these properties are directly in front uh, across from the properties that are asking to be annexed. I oppose the annexation requested for 9121, 9041, and 9053 Westmount Drive. As the city evaluates the satellite annex petition, the community asks that you evaluate the general statute 168-582A. When a city makes a satellite annexation, an area covered by a rural fire protection district, the city must annually pay its appropriate cost and share of the payment due of any debt that are related to facilities or equipment of the rural fire department. The Westmount Fire Department currently has an outstanding debt and the feasibility study does not appear to address this. The city needs to evaluate it in its share of the debt service based on the size of the requested annexation. Additionally, given the acreage involved, the city needs to evaluate General Statute 168-58.1, Section 5, provided that an area within the proposed satellite corporate limits when added to the area within all other satellite corporate limits may not exceed 10% of the area within the primary corporate limits of the annexing city. Given that a significant portion of the property is taxed at them, the city should consider this satellite annexation reduces the pool of future potential annexations. This analysis could be critical to the future of the city if we're looking to satellite annex an area for potential industrial or other high tax based or utility revenues that could be generated from other facilities. From a cost benefit analysis, this seems to be a poor use of limited satellite annexation potential considering the statutory 10% limit. Save a larger satellite annexation like this for a true revenue producer for the city. I believe that as the city thoughtfully evaluates this petition, the potential for a negative return on investment it will generate and the likely limitation of future satellite expansion for more viable projects that you hopefully agree this annexation is not a step forward for the city of Rocky Mount. I thank you for your time. I wish you a Merry Christmas in the upcoming year. Thank, thank you. you. Anyone else here to speak on this matter? Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> I'm DeLeon Parker, and I live at 4644 South Halifax Road. I also own land off of 1627 West Mount Drive, which is currently between the current city limits and the proposed site, along with my mother, two sisters, and nephews. I've lived in the West Mount community my entire life. I practice real estate law at 120 North Franklin Street, just over two blocks from here, and I'm a board certified specialist in residential and commercial real estate. I also oppose the annexation uh, request of 9121, 9041, and 9053 West Mount Drive. As a community, we understand the city's desire to grow and an individual owner's option to petition for annexation. As each speaker before me has addressed, there are a variety of concerns for both community residents and the city that should be given careful thought and consideration before moving forward. From the city perspective, this includes issues like negative return on investment given the tax exempt status of the majority of the property, 
the negative impacts to future satellite annexation given the 10% statutory limitation that appears unaddressed in the feasibility study, and analysis of the Westmount Fire Department debt and the city's potential statutory obligation there. Additionally, the feasibility study assumptions based on present use will not be accurate if the applicant's plans for business development come about and it changes to O&I. From a community standpoint, I believe the biggest opposition comes from the applicant's desire to change the property character from residential and church use to commercial. In recent statements on WHIG, the intent is clearly commercial, which will require future rezoning to the O&I, uh, which the community will strongly oppose on multiple fronts. The feasibility study does not address potentially significant costs the city might incur in bringing sewer to the property or the significant community outcry that would result from an attempt to recharacterize the property. To date, we have a petition with over 127 signatures of community residents opposed to such change and the way that the applicant has chosen to bring about that change. To respect the council's time, we've only had a few members of the community speak, but at this time, if it's okay, I would like to ask everyone from the Westmount community that is opposed to the annexation to please quietly stand. We respectfully ask that you either table or deny this present request. Uh, I've got copies of the petition, if I can give those to the clerk. And also, I'd like to ask, because of the similarity between this petition and the next petition, rather than us speaking again, if I can just provide our written comments to go on the record for the second petition. I personally would applaud that. <laughs> Thank you. And just for the record, we're not scheduled to vote on this tonight, but to receive public comment. If you would hand it to our assistant manager, Mr. Daniel, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Y'all have a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Anybody else from the public here to speak? Okay. Seeing none, I'll close this public hearing and acknowledge uh, the receipt of the feasibility city, uh, study and uh, the public hearing. Thank you, everyone who's spoken, and we appreciate uh, your comments. This time, it brings us to item number 11 on our agenda, which is uh, another public hearing. And the, I'll ask staff please come down and give us the feasibility study as it relates to annexation number 329-9041 and 9053 Westmount Drive. And, um, and, and please go over that for us, if you will. Then I'll open it up to public comment. Yeah, Mayor and Member Council, this property, 9041-9053 Westmount, immediately to the west, um, much larger track, 59.41, almost 60 acres. Um, Feasibility study projects an estimated uh, revenue uh, from the stormwater utility fee based on the proposed uses and the uh, uh, non-taxable ownership of that property. Any questions for Mr. Deaton? All right, seeing none, hearing none, I'll open the floor to any member of the public who's here to speak. Uh, I believe most of the comments in the previous public hearing also pertain to this, but in the event that somebody has something else to say, please come forward. Yes, uh, Malcolm Logan, rising again now in support of uh, agenda item number 11, proposed annexation number 329, concerning the properties at 9041 and 9053 Westmont Drive. Um, in addition to my uh, prior comments, I'm uh, rising on this particular occasion on behalf of petitioner uh, Word Tabernacle Church and its authorized representative, James Gilliard, um, I think it is uh, worth noting that the um, draft annexation agreement does provide for solid waste collection and sewer to remain private. So there is no expectation as articulated in the feasibility study that that would impose a financial hardship um, on the city. Um, I also uh, encourage everyone to consider these opportunities um, from a bigger picture perspective than solely looking at it from a tax revenue and potential utility revenue standpoint. Um, the uh, proposed activity on this site would result in economic investment. Um, we're at Tabernacle Church has a history of uh, driving successful economic development in this community, which even without generating tax revenue has served as a critical hub for social services, for infrastructure, and for other critical needs to the community. Um, 
any sort of investment in the development of property on these parcels would create jobs. Uh, it would drive um, uh, tourists and other uh, participants of the community to the market to spend money um, inside local businesses that would also boost the tax base of the city. So even if they're not directly traceable to the properties itself, there would still be economic benefit resulting from uh, its presence there. Um, I also would like to enter into the record the fact that the parcels are on a five-lane major collector between Rocky Mount and the I-95 interchange. Uh, the parcels are on a five-lane curb and gutter section road, i.e. it is not a subdivision road. There's a gas station, a convenience store, and a restaurant less than one mile to the west. There's a logging business less than one-third of a mile to the east. There's a communication slash cable provider uh, about one mile to the east. Um, for these reasons and those articulated in the feasibility study, I respectfully request your approval of the proposed annexation. Thank you. Thank you. Any other member of the public here to speak? Just couldn't stand it, could you? Couldn't stand it. <laughs> Very quickly, just as a point of addressing a couple comments that were just made. The cable TV company, Sudden Link, that's there has been there for over 40 years. It is in the current city limits. Uh, the logging business that was referenced under, I believe if you look at uh, industrial codes, is termed as agricultural. It has been there as long as I can remember, predates me, and is a non-conforming use with the county. Uh, in county planning, businesses are basically restricted to intersections, which is at a mile either direction, not in the middle of a road, so this would not be something that would be permitted anywhere in the current county uh, zoning regulations. So again, that gets back to the change in character uh, of the area. So thank you. Thank you. Any other member of the public here to speak? Hearing none, seeing none, I close the public hearing, which brings us to item 12 on our agenda, which consideration of the bid for the demolition of 10 houses listed below awarded to J&L Land Solutions in the amount of $66,218. They are 4017 Gloucester Road, 427 Arlington Street, 319 Marigold Street. Uh, and we have notations on the side. I'll please ask you to refer to those. Uh, 721 Gay Street, 413 and 415 North Pine Street, 835 West Thomas Street, 419 Northeast Main Street, 516 Coleman Street, and 327 South Discovery Street. I'm looking for a motion to award the bid as recommended. So moved. Second. Motion made by Councilman uh, Daltridge, and was that? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, Jabaris Walker. A second. Could could I yes, sir, uh, update on that, Mr. Barney? Please before you, before you vote. <laughs> uh, I had met with uh, the owner of 319 Marigold Street last week and his attorney. Uh, he had asked, I think, at the last council meeting that we pull that address off the demolition list. And so what we talked about was agreeing to take that off the demolition list on the condition that they provide a cash bond and a schedule for the renovation of the property, the rehabilitation of the property. Um, I've not seen the uh, cash bond or the schedule. He did apply for a building permit for the renovation of the property. So I don't have that. So uh, if you were to award the bid with 319 Marigold included in it, the total amount of the bid would be $81,598. The uh, 66218 dollar amount is with 319 Marigold being removed from the list. So then the motion on the floor is the $66,218 is exclusive of 319 Marigold pending uh, posting of a bond. So do we need to amend the motion? Mr. Rose? Yes, you, you, you need to. So Mr. Daltridge, would you be willing to amend the motion to, um, to reflect the $81,591 in the event that bond is not posted for 319 Marigold Street? Yes, sir, just as you mentioned. Mr. Jabaris uh, Walker, would you be willing to continue the second on that? Okay, is there a need for further discussion? Yes, sir. Councilman Harris, and then I will... Um, you? And I have a question, too. Yes, okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, my question to uh, Interim City Manager is what kind of time frame are we putting with um, Mr. Burnett on getting that cash bond and uh, uh, schedule back to the city? <laughs> What we agreed to was that we would have it before this meeting, the schedule and the bond. Do you have it? 
I, I don't have it. Uh, let's see, does, uh, does somebody have it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have it, and so I don't know that I've got a whole lot of choice but to recommend award of the bid with 319 Marigold included in it. We did, the other uh, negotiation we had in there was on uh, 4, 427 Arlington Street. There's another property that Mr. Burnett owns. He asked for uh, 60 days uh, before that demolition takes place in order that he could remove items of value, things like uh, windows and doors and uh, fireplace surrounds and, and things like that from the house. And so we've arranged with the demolition contractor to um, uh, proceed with the demolition of all the homes that are on the list and um, and accomplish that one on Arlington Street um, uh, not earlier than January 31st, 2023, to accommodate that request. Thank you. I recognize uh, Councilman Knight. Uh, was it, you want to speak to I'll recognize you, Councilman Joyner, and then uh, Mr. Knight, I'll add you to the bottom of the list. Yeah. Uh, the manager, are you... Is there any way you can meet back with Mr. Barnett so we can get, if there is anything we can do? I didn't say that again now, Reverend John. Um, I know we had talked about Mr. Barnett. Uh, if, 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 do, can you plan to meet with him to get any other clarity on that? Are you asking to, to meet with him again? I, I could meet with him again. If he's, if he's willing to meet, I'd be happy to meet with him. Okay. Councilman Blackwell. I just would like deadlines. I would, I would like deadlines that are clear. I um, want to support anyone who is helping us to revitalize our communities, um, but we need deadlines. The houses have sat vacant for a long time um, and dilapidated. And um, we saw some pictures, I think, the last meeting mm -hmm. with some progress, um, but we need deadlines. Thank you. Councilman Knight? My, my question, uh, Mr. Varney, uh, Mr. Burnett had given a list of repairs that uh, was done to the property, uh, 319 Marigold. Has that been um, uh, vetted and, and if the work has been done, that was stated um, during the public meeting? Right. When we met with him, um, uh, we, uh, we, we, we saw pictures that he presented that indicated that the front of the house had been painted uh, and that he had um, done some electrical work inside the house. There was an electrical, a new electrical panel box and, um, and some, um, what do you call it, receptacles that uh, apparently were connected to that. Uh, there was no electrical permit for those uh, improvements, but the pictures did show those uh, those that work had been done. Uh, but the pictures also showed a pretty extensive amount of work that needs needs to be done to get that house back in uh, well back in condition, back in reusable condition. Did not go visit um, do a visual um, visit of the of the property. After we had um, the comment from Mr. Burnett, it seemed as if inspection would have gone out to verify um, it, whether he did or did not. Right. We we and right. One of the code ins code enforcement inspectors did go and visit the property and took photographs of that of um, what was in the house and and those photographs uh, match what what Mr. Okay. Burnett had showed us. So. Just, just painting on the on the front side of the house it's and cosmetic stuff. and the electrical. Okay, I'm in agreement. Okay, any additional comments, questions? Hearing none. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Brings us to item 13 on our agenda, which is consideration of the recommendation recommendation for the fiscal year 2022-2023. CDBG CV Public Service Awards totaling $69,064. The Boys and Girls Club, Rocky Mountain Edgecombe Community Development Corporation, United Community Ministries, Home for the Children at Bassett Center, and then the Community Shelter. 
requested, uh, requested action is that we approve the recommended funding request and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute the required documentation on behalf of the city. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion made by Councilman Joyners. Is there a second? Second by Councilman T.J. Walker. Any need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Item carries. Item 14 is consideration of the 2021 Annual Action Plan Home American Rescue Plan Substantial Amendment. Uh, public hearing was held on November 28th of 2022. Requested action is that we approve the plan amendment and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute required documentation on behalf of the city. Is there a motion? So motion made by Councilman Joyner. Is there a second? Second. Second by uh, Councilman Tom Harris. Is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Brings us to item 15, which is the election of a mayor pro tem. It's a one-year term, one term that expires December of 2023. I'll open the floor for nomination. I'll make a motion to nominate T.J. Walker for mayor pro tem. T.J. Walker. Are there any other nominations? I was going to make a nomination uh, of Reuben Blackwell. Okay, Reuben Blackwell. And I'm going to withdraw my name. Thank you. Councilman Blackwell withdraws. Okay. Here thank you know. Thank you for the I'm sorry, Councilman. I said thank you for the <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, hearing no other nominations, um, all in favor of T.J. Walker, please say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Congratulations, Councilman Walker. Can I? Uh, Yes, Councilman Joyner. Uh, thank you, uh, T.J. Walker. Uh, if we could, uh, I know that the normal terms have been one year, and I know that we try to make sure that we give other opportunities to council to serve in that position. And I know that, that the Mayor Pro Tem hosts um, the uh, Council of a Whole could we look at, uh, since this is the first two-year term, can we look at uh, having these next terms be two-year terms and uh, job descriptions clearly of the mayor pro tem and uh, that we have two-year terms and then rotate? I, I would request that we have that discussion, uh, maybe not tonight, but uh, perhaps we can add it to the next committee of the whole. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, would that be something we could do? Uh, and then have that discussion and perhaps go from there. Okay. That brings us to item 16 on the agenda, agenda, which is the appointment of Keith C. Rogers as our city manager. I need a motion. Oh, yes, move. Councilman. Before, we, before we do that, I just wanted to thank uh, the councilman, oh. thank Councilman Jabaris Walker for the nomination. And the term is still a one year term. I think what happened was there was a one year term that expired and there was a re election for another one year term. But uh, I don't have any issue with putting it on the committee of the whole agenda for two year term. I have a thank you, Councilman. I have a motion uh, from um, Councilman Knight to uh, appoint Keith Rogers as city manager. Is there a second? Was that you? Or was you? Huh? Oh, I thought I heard you. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. You got the second as uh, Councilman Joyner. Uh, uh, is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Uh, All opposed, like sign. We now have a new city manager, and I think that uh, Mr. Varney probably is probably the happiest man tonight of anybody here in the room. <laughs> <laughs> or his wife is. Yeah, she is. It brings us to item 16, which are, are there any appointments to be Excuse brought me, before? Mr. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Councilman That's Blackwell. That's sort of a big deal. It's a huge saying. deal. Yeah, it is. And um, don't you think that, um, you know, Oh, we'll read this? I thought, okay, into absolutely. The, into I'd be happy to do that. I'll be happy. Well, you know what? Okay, I'll be happy to do that. Um, city Council appoints Keith C. Rogers, Jr. as city manager. Uh, Mr. Rogers is currently the town manager of Dumfries, Virginia, and has been responsible for the leadership and management of daily operations of the town's government since 2019. Dumfries has 30 plus employees who serve the town's nearly 6,000 residents. Among his many accomplishments in D Dumfries, Rogers has successfully led the town council and staff through months uh, municipal bond refunding process, resulting in a savings of more than $640,000. He 
He previously spent a decade working for the city of Richmond, Virginia, holding various executive roles that included chief of staff and chief administrative officer. Um, and then we'll just let everybody read the various quotes. But uh, we have somebody that I think we're very excited about, somebody I think will do great and wondrous things for the city of Rocky Mountain. And, and I think that seeing the unanimous vote here from council is an expression, I believe, of everybody's position and desire for his success. So with that said, I will open it up now for appointments to city council. Are there any appointments before to be brought we do before that, the can council? We just, uh, can we just go yeah. ahead with the appointments? And then I'll I'm, no, I just want to stand and give Mr. Varney a Oh, well, I, we weren't done with him yet. But, yeah. <laughs> now, Peter, I just need you to know, despite that standing ovation, you can't leave until March. So <laughs> you're not done yet. This is the Hotel California, after all. So. <laughs> it, it's, it's proven to be that for you, for sure. <laughs> okay, are there any appointments to be brought before council tonight? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Councilman Daltridge. I'm not sure if it was in our packet or it was going to be passed out, but we, <clears throat> if it's not, that hopefully we can appoint William Johnson to the Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, we, I, have, I have a copy of his uh, personal history form. And um, but there's one point. There's one availability on that board. Okay. Any other names to be brought before? Yes, sir. Councilman Mayor, Harris. Um, ward six has a, Ward six has an opening for tree advisory committee. I have a completed personal history form from Austin Bradley Warren, and would like for him to serve in that capacity. Uh, thank you for your consideration. Any other names to be brought? Okay, William Johnson uh, for the Historic Preservation and the Austin Warren for the Tree Advisory. Uh, do I have a motion in support of uh, these two individuals? So moved. Councilman Joyner has made the motion. Is there a second? Second. Oh, second. Second. Second from uh, Councilman T.J. Walker. Uh, need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Having no other business to appear before the council tonight, I now adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Hmm. Much sooner than I thought. <laughs>